Imagine a shark so massive, its mouth could swallow you whole. And your friends too. No, this isn't science fiction. It's the Mega Mouth Shark, a real life deep sea monster that's been lurking in the shadows of our oceans. Our story begins on November 15th, 1976, off the coast of Oahu, Hawaii. It was just another day for the crew of the US Navy ship AFB-14, but little did they know they were about to make a discovery that would rewrite marine biology textbooks. As they hauled in their sea anchor from a depth of about 165 meters, they found something extraordinary entangled within it, a shark unlike any they had ever seen before. This wasn't just any shark. It was a completely new species, so different from known sharks that it required its own genus. Imagine the excitement and disbelief as scientists examined this 4.5 meter long, 750 kilogram specimen. Its most striking feature? An enormously disproportionate mouth that seemed to engulf its entire head. The discovery of the Megamouth shark, scientifically named Megacasma pelagios was nothing short of revolutionary. It represented one of the most significant finds in 20th century ichthyology, comparable to the rediscovery of the coelacanth, a fish thought to have been extinct for millions of years. Since that fateful day, only a handful of megamouth sharks have been encountered, with each sighting adding to our limited knowledge of this enigmatic creature. The megamouth shark is a creature that seems almost cartoonish in its proportions, yet it's perfectly adapted for its deep sea lifestyle. Let's dive into the unique anatomy that makes this shark so distinctive. First and foremost, we must address the feature that gives this shark its name, its enormous mouth. Imagine a mouth so large that it takes up nearly a quarter of the shark's entire body length. In a 5-meter-long megamouth, the mouth could measure up to 1.3 meters wide. This is no ordinary shark mouth. It's a highly specialized feeding apparatus that sets the megamouth apart from its relatives. The megamouth's head is bulbous and rounded, giving it a somewhat comical appearance compared to the sleek, streamlined heads of other sharks. This unusual head shape houses not only its massive mouth, but also relatively small eyes that peer out from either side. Despite its imposing size, the megamouth has very small teeth, a clue to its feeding habits that we'll explore later. Moving down its body, you'll notice that the megamouth lacks the muscular, torpedoed-shaped form of fast-swimming sharks. Instead, its body is soft and flabby, tapering towards a tail that's asymmetrical with a longer upper lobe. This body shape suggests that the megamouth is not built for speed, but rather for a more languid lifestyle in the deep ocean. The megamouth's coloration is also worth noting. It sports a dark, brownish-black hue on its upper body, fading to a lighter color underneath, a common pattern in marine animals known as countershading. This coloration helps camouflage the shark from both above and below in the dim light of its deep sea habitat. Perhaps one of the most intriguing features of the megamouth is the presence of a white band along its upper jaw. When the shark opens its mouth, this band becomes visible, and some scientists have speculated that it might serve to attract prey in the darkness of the deep sea. All these unique anatomical features come together to create a shark that's perfectly adapted to its environment and lifestyle. When you think of sharks, you might imagine a fierce predator with rows of razor-sharp teeth hunting down large prey. But the megamouth shark flips this image on its head. Despite its imposing size, this gentle giant is a filter feeder more akin to whales than to its carnivorous shark cousins. Its enormous mouth isn't designed for biting or tearing. Instead, it's a highly efficient filtration system. As the shark swims, it keeps its mouth wide open, allowing water to flow in. This water is then filtered through specialized structures called gill rakers, finger-like projections that line the inside of its gill slits. 
But what exactly is the mega mouth filtering out of the water? Its diet consists primarily of plankton, particularly small crustaceans like krill and copepods. It also feeds on jellyfish, adding a gelatinous component to its menu. The mega mouth's feeding behavior is believed to be closely tied to the daily vertical migrations of its prey. Plankton typically move up towards the surface at night to feed, then descend to deeper waters during the day. Scientists believe that megamouth sharks follow this movement, a behavior known as dio vertical migration. This feeding strategy places the megamouth in a select group of filter feeding sharks, alongside the whale shark and the basking shark. However, the megamouth's approach to filter feeding may be unique. While whale sharks and basking sharks are known to actively swim with their mouths open to filter feed, the megamouth may use a different technique. Some researchers have proposed that the megamouth might use a form of suction feeding. This would involve the shark expanding its pharynx, which is the throat, to create negative pressure, sucking in water and prey. This theory is supported by the megamouth's relatively weak swimming muscles and its ability to greatly expand its mouth and throat. The white band on the megamouth's upper jaw, visible when its mouth is open, has led to another intriguing hypothesis. Some scientists speculate that this band might be bioluminescent, acting as a lure to attract plankton in the darkness of the deep sea. While this idea is captivating, it remains unproven and is a subject of ongoing research. Understanding the feeding habits of the megamouth shark is crucial not only for our knowledge of this species, but also for our broader understanding of deep sea ecosystems. As a large filter feeder, the megamouth plays a unique role in its environment, potentially influencing the distribution and abundance of plankton populations in the areas it inhabits. The megamouth shark is a creature of the open ocean, inhabiting what's known as the pelagic zone. This vast, three-dimensional habitat stretches from the surface waters down into the twilight zone of the deep sea, and it's here that the megamouth makes its home. While initially thought to be confined to specific regions, sightings and captures of megamouth sharks have revealed a distribution that spans tropical and temperate waters worldwide. They've been found in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, with notable hotspots including the waters around Japan, Taiwan, and the Philippines. The vertical range of the megamouth shark is equally impressive. These sharks have been encountered from near the surface down to depths of about a thousand meters. This wide depth range is likely linked to their feeding behavior and the daily vertical migrations of their planktonic prey. Interestingly, the megamouth seems to prefer different depths at different times of the day. A tracking study conducted on a single specimen in 1990 revealed a fascinating pattern. During the day, the shark swam at depths of 120 to 160 meters. But as night fell, it ascended, spending the nighttime hours at depths between 12 and 25 meters. This behavior, known as dial vertical migration, is common among many marine organisms, from tiny plankton to large predators. For the megamouth, it's likely a strategy to follow the movements of its prey, which rise towards the surface at night to feed. The megamouth's habitat preferences highlight the interconnectedness of ocean ecosystems. These sharks traverse different oceanic zones, linking the surface waters with the deeper realms below. Their movements potentially play a role in the transport of nutrients and energy between these zones. Despite their wide distribution, megamouth sharks remain incredibly rare encounters. This rarity could be due to naturally low population numbers, their preference for deep waters, or simply our limited ability to detect them in the vast expanse of the open ocean. Each sighting or capture is therefore a valuable opportunity to learn more about where these elusive sharks live and how they interact with their environment. When it comes to the reproduction and life cycle of the megamouth shark, 
we find ourselves in largely uncharted waters. The extreme rarity of encounters with these sharks, particularly with juveniles or pregnant females, has left scientists with more questions than answers. However, the little we do know paints a picture of a fascinating and complex life history. Like many sharks, megamouths are ovoviviparous. This means that eggs develop and hatch inside the mother's body, and she gives birth to live young. However, unlike some shark species that have a placental connection to their offspring, Megamouth embryos are believed to survive on a steady diet of unfertilized eggs provided by the mother, a process known as oophagy. The size at which megamouth sharks reach sexual maturity is estimated based on the limited specimens available. Males are thought to mature at around 4 meters in length, while females may not reach maturity until they're about 5 meters long. This size-based maturation rather than age-based, is common among sharks and allows them to reach reproductive capability when they've grown large enough to support the energetic demands of breeding. The gestation period, litter size, and frequency of breeding in megamouth sharks all remain mysteries. Given their large size and the energetic cost of producing offspring, it's likely that they have a prolonged gestation period and give birth to relatively few but well-developed pups. One intriguing aspect of megamouth reproduction is the potential for sexual dimorphism, differences between males and females beyond their reproductive organs. This size difference could play a role in mating behaviors or strategies, but without direct observations, we can only speculate. The early life stages of megamouth sharks are particularly enigmatic. No definitive sightings or captures of newborn or very young megamouths have been recorded. This leaves us with questions about where these sharks give birth, how the young survive, and what habitats they prefer in their early years. In the end, the megamouth shark is more than just a biological curiosity. It's a symbol of the ocean's capacity to amaze us, a reminder of how much we have yet to learn, and an inspiration for future generations of marine scientists and conservationists. As long as megamouth sharks swim in the shadowy depths of our oceans, they will continue to spark our curiosity and fuel our desire to explore and protect the wonders of the marine world. And if you want to dive deeper into the mysteries of the ocean, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. And don't forget to tap the bell icon to receive notifications whenever we upload new content.